Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right, so just want to chime in on what I saw from the Thunder tonight because that young team really put on a hell of a show. Granted, of course, it's the first summer league game. We don't want to overreact that we're going up against a, a young Thunder, a Utah team, rather, that's, you know, not really loaded full of lottery talent like themselves. But just from a sheer impressed standpoint, I am very very impressed uh the fact of the matter is they do have a lot of lottery talent that's why they had to let go of I isaiah roby it was not something that i think most teams would have did i don't think it was something that he necessarily deserved in any way i just look at their team and understand that it was absolutely a surplus of young talent they just have too much of it can't can't keep everybody and we saw what they have on display it was really really dope seeing giddy back out there he's healed up from his injury making dimes, doing what it is that he's doing. He's one. He's becoming one of my favorite players to watch um, just, just off of the sheer nature of his um, intellect and getting people involved in the timing from which he plays, the pace in which he plays. He's, you can just clearly see he's going to be fun to watch. And I think it's going to translate to winning as well. And then Chet Holmgren, my God. Look, I looked up Chet Holmgren, did a little homework on him. I didn't look up his... I didn't dig into his offensive game. What I looked into more so was his defensive game, and that's what made me understand that he's a prospect that I wouldn't hesitate to draft. <clears throat> wouldn't hesitate at all. But what he showed me tonight was something else. That was not the level that I was aware he he was going to tap into. The way that he played with confidence, the speed in which he played, his handle, his jump shot, and mind you, this is a seven foot one, seven foot two guy. He he was dribbling the ball and stepping into jump shots. I mean, I'm like, he can create his own shot this way. I'm I'm looking at him like he's gonna be somebody you have to deal with. The only thing that concerns me about him is what the obvious is. It's his size. You know, you saw situations tonight where guys were able to kind of bang into him and score over him. You know, they were able to, despite his length, they were able to put a body into his chest. So he's going to have to put on strength. And, you know, people are just going to have to accept that that's going to be the case no matter what. Even if he does put on strength, there are going to be guys who are going to be able to do that to him. But all in all, that length, I mean, six blocks or something. Was it six or seven blocks tonight? And then just the shooting. I mean, the shooting was just like, my God, this dude is putting on a show. He looked, he looked like somebody else. I don't know who he looked like but not the guys I saw not the guy I saw in the highlights of what it is I was studying no he moved three times faster than that dude I saw in them highlights man he, this was just you can clearly see that this is a guy who plays with a lot of swagger okay that's what I would say he's looking to entertain he's playing with confidence he believes in himself and and he knows what his body can do he has wiry strength he's not lacking in athleticism he's not a a stiff or a pole or anything of that nature. This is somebody who plays fluid basketball. And you got to deal with him. He's got bounce. He's got wiggle. He's got a lot of that. And he's 7'2". So a lot of people are concerned about what Victor's going to be when he comes into the league. Chet is also somebody you got to deal with. Evan Mobley, another one. Like, these guys are coming into this league. They, they are so long and they're so capable. It's like you're going to have to find players that can guard them, man. It's not going to be enough to just have certain guys that are really, really talented. If you don't have the size to deal with these guys, you are going to be out of here. And that's why I, I do understand what the what the Timberwolves are trying to do. I just think that they executed it in a ridiculously horrible fashion. <laughs> when you when you invest that much in Rudy Gobert, that particular guy, no, no. But the idea of loading up on that type of size, yeah, they're they're on the right track. You need that type of length. You just need to make sure you acquire it in very intelligent ways. Uh, and I think the Thunder have effectively done that by making sure they put Poku together, putting Chet on this team, obviously, and then several other players that have that type of length as well. And if they are the team that tanks their way and gets Victor on top of Chet, I'm telling you, you, you haven't seen a dynasty like this in a long time. It ain't going to be like Golden State. It's going to be something different, but they're going to win. <laughs> they're going to win a lot because you're not going to be able to stop that length at all. You're going to be able to acquire the talent. 
that's going to allow you to match up with that. It's not going to be out there. So I'm just letting people know right now. The league is changing, man. These unicorns, they're not. They're coming more often now. That's what I'm saying. They're not new. They're not unicorns anymore. You're getting. They're coming often, and you better have one or two on your team. So that's why I'm so happy my Lakers picked up Thomas Bryant, and Damian Jones, and keeping Anthony Davis. Even though KD seems to be on the block, this is why. This is why you make a decision like that because you need that length if you're going to guard the new NBA. It's that simple. In, in a world where Chet is running around and Giannis is running around and, and Victor and these guys, you're going to need long players. B.I. You're going to need to deal because <laughs> they're going to keep coming. <laughs> so that that's one thing I noticed. Also, just in talking about the Thunder, um, you know, the, the Jalen Williams dudes, both of them are serious, man. I, I, I know one of them, they call it J-Dub, as I was listening to the announcer. I'm not sure how they're going to differentiate the other one. J-Will and J-Dub, I think that's how they're going to do it. But both of them dudes are a problem, man. Jalen, the J-A-L-E-N, I did a video, video on him. He's an incredible passer, just like Giddy. So when you talk about the type of ball movement and the type of showmanship that you're going to see with those two facilitators on the floor at the same time consistent, consistently, that's going to be fun to watch. So keep in mind, one of them, Jalen Williams, is a dimer. And when you got two dimers on the floor at once, the fast break opportunities, the, 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 the popping of the ball and stuff like that, as this team grows, oh, my God, I'm telling y'all, OKC has done something. They have done something here. <clears throat> they are not playing games. Um, Robinson Earl, uh, Usman, Usman Dang. I mean, these dudes are all talented. You know, Wigan, Aaron Wiggins, they were all balling tonight. You saw them all out there. And, of course, you got to deal with Trey Mann. Of course, you got to deal with SGA. I mean, this team, I don't know what their goals are for this season. Because they could teeter either way. Either they could be really, really solid or they could tank it out and, and continue to try to, you know, go after Victor. But... I have a feeling that if they don't decide to sit some people, that they ain't going to be in the run for victory. <laughs> They're going to be a little too good to get them. I'm just telling you right now, I think Oklahoma has reached that point. Now, granted, they got a million picks. But as far as them being bad enough to, to tank, naturally, I don't think they're going to be bad enough. Not after watching what I saw tonight. And that's that's notwithstanding the fact they're going up against a summer league team, that they're going to, you know, I'm not... That's notwithstanding, but what I'm telling you is I'm not necessarily looking at that. I'm looking at the depth. I'm looking at the fact that once they decide to go with their second unit, they still got a bunch of young lottery talent that's going to be coming in wearing second units out. They're going to beat teams that they shouldn't beat because of it. <laughs> teams are going to think they can sit, say, you're going to come in there with like Boston or something like that. You think it's going to be cool to sit Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown at the same time against the OKC Thunder, and it's not. <laughs> Because they're going to come in with that second unit and they're going to continue to push. So it's going to be one of those situations where it's like, I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs. But I'm as, I am saying, if you take the cuffs off of them and you give them a good system and let them kids run, they may mess around and be good enough to be a playing tournament team. Like, if, if you just take the cuffs off of them. Now, I don't know they're going to do that because obviously they're young players for one, two, you know, it's, a lot can happen in a season, and, and victory is looming, you know. But for, for me, just looking at this team, I wouldn't want to step on the, the progression of what it is they're, they're capable of doing. If they get off to a good start or something like that, I would not want to pull the plug on them playing well just because I want to tank. Not, not with a bunch of young kids. You don't want to get them off to a, a losing habit type of building situation. And that's what ends up happening a lot of times with teams tank. It's like you got a lot of young guys, but you're teaching them the wrong things because you don't want to win. Or you're allowing them to do the wrong things because you're not trying to win. That's a bad way. You want to teach them how to win and so they can lead you to victories and then add players to them. So it's tricky. It's real tricky if you're the Thunder. You got to figure out what you want to do. But in my humble opinion, you might be a little too good to tank. A little too good to tank. So that's pretty much what I got to say about the situation. Um... 
great win for their team, obviously, in the summer league. Clearly, they got a lot of basketball to play. I think there will be games where they don't play as well, and we'll overreact to that. But just zooming out and looking at the type of length and talent that they have up and down that roster, a bunch of young players that eventually are going to have to be paid, it is kind of depressing knowing that they ain't going to be able to keep everybody. I will say that. It's a lot of those guys, they're going to they're gonna leave early because they have to get paid. They're too good to stay in one spot. So that's unfortunate. That is the unfortunate part of this. But for the time being, for those first two years while those kids are together, they they look like they could be special. They like they legitimately look as if this could translate into the big leagues, what, what we saw tonight. So, yeah, keep your eyes open for the OKC Thunder. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching.